fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. No one on the main street of the town of Hawksville saw anything unusual about the five horsemen who drew rein at the hitch rail in front of the bank. None of the townspeople knew that one of the riders was Bluff Logan, a notorious outlaw. The men with him were members of his gang. Easy, boy. As they dismounted, Logan said, You wait here, Slim. Keep watch. Right. All right, boys, let's go. A few minutes after the four men entered the bank, Jane Coleman drove down the street in a light buckboard with her 12-year-old son. Their destination was the general store, but they never reached it. For suddenly gunfire roared in the bank. The door burst open and four men rushed out shooting. Clear out of town. Steady right. You're going fast. Get up. Get the sheriff. Shoot the crooks. Let them have it. Bluff and his men were some distance away when the sheriff and his deputy rushed from their office and opened fire. The outlaws returned the fire with little expectation of hitting the lawman. Their shots went wild. One grazed the scalp of Bob Coleman. Another struck his mother in the back. Late that night, Luke Coleman paced the floor in the living room of his small ranch house. He turned sharply as the doctor came from the bedroom. Doc, how's Jeannie? Luke, I was going to call you, but before I could, it was too late. Too late? One minute she was sleeping, and the next, she was dead. Dead? My... My Jenny dead? I... I've done all I can for Bob. He's resting quietly now, and I think he'll pull through. My wife killed, and my son wounded. The sheriff said the cashier recognized those killers. He claims Bluff Logan and his men robbed the bank. Bluff Logan, huh? That's one killer I'll never forget. Any more than I'll forget Sheriff Jackson and his wild shooting. Well, you can't blame the sheriff, Luke. He was doing his duty. Was it his duty to open fire when Jenny and Bob were in the way? Well, you 
don't know that the sheriff shot them. There's so much lead flying around. Who knows whether they were shot by lawmen or outlaws? But Logan will pay for that shooting. And so will the law. Now, hold on, Luke. You'll not gain anything now, by Don't doing... worry, Doc. I'll not go gunning for Sheriff Jackson. But I'm not staying here where I'll have to look at him every day. You're leaving town? Yeah. As soon as Bob's out of danger, I'm clearing out. But it'll be some time before he's able to travel. I'll, I'll leave him here. Jenny's sister will be able to raise him better than I could. Well, Luke, I'm sorry. I wish there was something I could do to help you. There's nothing anyone can do, Doc. Except me. What do you mean? I have a score to settle with the law... And an outlaw. Two weeks later, Luke Coleman left town, and he never returned. In an effort to make the law pay for his wife's death, he turned outlaw. The sheriffs of more than a dozen southwestern communities were troubled by robbery after robbery, but Luke's trail never crossed Bluff Logan's. Several years passed, and Bob Coleman grew to manhood. After his aunt's death, Bob left town, too. He was riding south late one evening. Come on, get him, hit him. When suddenly his horse stepped into a hole. Hey, what the... When the animal fell, Bob was thrown from the saddle. He struck his head on a rock and lay motionless. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were traveling south when they saw Bob lying at the side of the trail. They drew rein and dismounted. Oh, 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 Knock him unconscious, but him not hurt bad. I'll see if he's carrying any identification. Uh, Tracks show him thrown from horse, but horse run away. Here's a name carved in the handle of his knife. Coleman, Bob Coleman. Oh, you think him related to Luke Coleman? I don't know. We follow outlaw named Luke Coleman. Yes, when Bob comes to, we'll ask him about Luke. Ah, I'll need to go and look for runaway horse, Kimasabi. Good idea, Toto. I'll wait for you here. Shortly after Toto left, Bob opened his eyes. He blinked and reached for his gun when he saw the Lone Ranger's hey, mask. Hey, There's the... no need to draw a gun. Uh, the masked outlaw. The mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. It does as far as I'm concerned. I don't have my badge yet, but... Badge? I'm on my way to Buckeye to take the sheriff's job. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Bob. So you know my name. I saw the handle of your knife. Tell me... Do you know a man named Luke Coleman? He's my father. Why? Your father? That's right. I haven't seen him since I was 12 years old. He left town after Mom was killed and I was wounded. Who shot you? Bluff Logan and his gang. We were in front of the bank when they came out after pulling a robbery. They shot their way out of town and escaped. Where was the sheriff? He opened fire from the door of his office to try to stop him. Mom and I were caught in the middle of the shooting. I was wounded and she was killed. I'm sorry. I've hated outlaws ever since. My dad blamed Sheriff Jackson for Mom's death. He left Hawksville after she was buried and never came back. Did one of the sheriff's bullets hit your mother? No. No, she was shot in the back. We were looking toward Logan and his gang when the sheriff opened fire behind our backs. I remember Mom turned toward the lawman just before she was hit. So it had to be an outlaw's bullet. Does your father know that? Yeah. By the time I remembered the facts, he'd already left town. I wrote and told him, but the letter might have been lost. Where is he now? I don't know. He used to send money to my aunt regularly, but he never stayed in one place long. I've lost track of him in the last five years. Hey, the rider's coming this way. He's leading my horse. It's my friend, Toto. He went to look for it. So the critter ran away after that fall. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Oh, he find horse, Kimasabi. Him not hurt, but plenty scared. Oh, that's good news. I... I'm obliged to you for going after him. Bob, will you be able to travel now? Oh, sure. I'm all right, mister. Then Toto and I will be on our way. Easy, steady, big Easy, Scott. Easy, Toto. We may meet again. I hope so, mister. Uh, good luck in your new job. Thanks. Let's go, Toto. Come on, sir. Get him off, scout. Less than a month after the Lone Ranger met Bob Coleman, the masked man sent a message to Marshal Hancock in Big Bend. The marshal read the telegram to his assistant, then sent for a young deputy named Hollis. You sent for me, marshal? That's right, Hollis. 
I'm sending you to meet a man who's been trailing Luke Coleman and his gang. I'll tell you how to find the man you're to work with. Identify yourself to him. He'll be waiting in a secluded camp. A few minutes after Hollis left the office with his instructions, the marshal's assistant asked, Marshal, why didn't you tell Hollis he's on his way to meet the Lone Ranger? Well, I figure he's due for a surprise. Hollis is a good man, all right, but he needs seasoning. It'll do him good to work with that masked man. He'll learn a lot. I don't know about that. Hollis isn't the kind who likes to work with anyone. Early the next day, a man named Kino left Luke Coleman's hideout to buy supplies in the town of Buckeye. Before starting the return trip, Kino decided to stop in the cafe. There he met an old friend named Bluff Logan. Logan? Well, I almost didn't recognize you with that beard. <laughs> I grew it so as the law wouldn't recognize me, Kino. What are you doing here? Oh, just drifting through town. But I'm glad I met you. He wants to ask if you could join my gang. Yeah, and you turned me down. I didn't need another man at the time. But right now, I need several good gunslingers. What happened to your gang? Trying to organize one now. Want to join me? I'm working with Luke Coleman. Never heard of him. He's heard of you. Oh. (laughs) You mentioned your name a couple of times. And what he says isn't good. What's he got against me? A hold-up in the town of Hawksville. Now, what's a ten-year-old hold-up got to do with Coleman? I don't know. How many men are in his gang? It was four of us, not counting Luke. Well, you fellas should be doing all right. Yeah, but we're not. Luke's had a run of bad luck lately. But he has plans. I can't and... spend plans, Kino. Maybe you and the rest of Luke's boys need a new leader. That'd suit me, Bluff. But I don't know how the others feel about it. Suppose I ride back to your hideout with you and palaver with Luke and the boys. We might be able to make a deal. Good idea. Let's get going. When he returned to the hideout with Bluff Logan, Kino was relieved to find Luke Coleman away. He introduced Logan to Baldy, Blaze, and an old man named Toby. Of the three outlaws, only Toby was antagonistic. Kino ignored him as he asked... Where's Luke? He went to Buckeye and looked over the bank. How come we didn't meet him on the way here? Luke's found a couple of shortcuts to town. He says plenty of time for using them. How much longer does he want to wait before robbing that bank? We could go in shooting and come That's out with all That's not Luke's the... way of doing things, Kino. I'm tired of Luke's way of running things. Now you're talking, Kino. Uh... Well, he's not talking for himself. Not for the rest of us. What about that, boys? You agree with Kino? Well, it might be a good thing to do things different for a change. Yeah, maybe we'd be better off. You double-crossing polecats, what's wrong with you? How come you're turning on Luke? His luck turned on him first. We haven't been able to pull a big job in months. He's planning a big job right now. He doesn't need Bluff Logan's help to pull it. Logan, you better clear out of here before he gets back. Kino was local to bring you here. Now that I'm here, Toby, I aim to stay. Maybe Luke and I can come to an agreement. If he walks in and finds you here, he'll be plenty riled. He'll not see me when he first comes in. I'll wait in the next room till he's inside. I'll get that drop on him before I start talking. You'll not get away with that. When Luke shows up, I'll tell you. You don't tell him anything, Toby. Now shut up. Why not let him have it? We need Toby in the gang, Logan. He's an expert safe cracker. Oh. Well, in that case, we'll have to rope in time till he simmers down. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. Meanwhile, Deputy Marshal Hollis reached the camp where he had been sent by Marshal Hancock. Oh, hold there. As he dismounted, the Lone Ranger said, That's the Deputy Marshal's badge on your vest. I'm Deputy Hollis, but you Did Marshal wearing... Hancock send you here? Well, yes, but uh, I didn't expect to meet a masked outlaw. Did Marshal Hancock tell you I'm not dodging the law? He told me to cooperate with a man who'd been trailing Luke Coleman's gang. My friend Todd and I have found Coleman's hideout in a shack about four miles west of here. Straight through the canyon. I wonder what they're doing in these parts. There's a bank with over half a million dollars in gold and currency in the town of Buckeye. Ten miles from their hideout. I didn't know that. Coleman and his men know it. They've been watching the bank. We'll get them before they have a chance to rob it. I know the sheriff in Buckeye. He's already been warned to be on the lookout for the robbery. But uh, before you arrest Coleman, I want a chance to speak to him alone. Why? It's a personal reason. Oh, so he's an old outlaw pal of yours. No, Coleman's no friend of mine. But I know his son. Hey, a rider's coming this way. Don't draw your gun. But it may be Coleman. My Indian friend, Toto. Who's got hope of that? Oh, Kimasabi. Yes? Me watch Coleman hide out, like you say. Coleman leaves shack, head west. Me think him on way to town. This may be a chance to talk to him alone. This is... Hold on there, mister. Sorry, Marshal, but I want to talk to Coleman. I'll be back soon to help you close in on the gang. Easy, steady, big fellow. Monsilly! Easy, Scott, easy, fellow. Where, Marshal Hancock? He couldn't come, so he sent me in his place. Injun, I don't like the way your pal's trying to run things. Him not try to run things. Him only want to talk to Luke Coleman. You can't corral crooks with talk. Steady. When he comes back here, tell him I've gone to arrest the Coleman gang. But there are four feller in gang. You wait. Wait for what? I'm the law around here. I'll do things my way. Get up there. Meanwhile, Luke Coleman was on his way back to the cabin from town. He was about to turn off the main trail to a shortcut he knew, when suddenly... All right, Luke. Here with it. You're covered. All right, all right. Oh, there. Oh, there. Uh, show yourself. Come on. Glad to. I've been waiting for you. You called me by name, mister. Maybe I'd recognize you if you'd take off that mask. Uh, we've never met before. And what's the idea we lay in there? Do you know the sheriff in Buckeye? I never worry about sheriffs as long as they stay out of my way. You'd better not count on Sheriff Coleman staying out of your way if you try to rob the bank. Sheriff who? Coleman. Bob Coleman. What? Bob? He told me about the Hawksville bank robbery that killed his mother. That polecat bluff Logan and a low-code sheriff named Jackson killed him. Bob said his mother died with a bullet in her back. Yes, she did. He claims Logan and his men were behind her. That means that Jackson didn't shoot her. But if that's true... Do you think Bob would lie to protect his mother's murderer? Oh, no, he wouldn't do that. He hates outlaws so much he became a sheriff to help clean up this part of the country. Does Bob know I, I've turned out law? I don't think he does, yet. What do you mean, yet? Are you talking blackmail? No, I'm talking surrender. In all the years you've been riding the outlaw trail, you've never killed anyone. If you plead guilty, the court might be lenient. You could serve your sentence and then be free. But I have a score to settle. The law has a score to settle, too. I'll think it over. While you're thinking, remember this. The law has you and your gang spotted. They'll close in on you, and I'll help them. Who who are you? I'm not on your side of the law, Luke. There's only one masked man I know of who works with the law. I work with the law. I said it. Well, I'll... I'll go back to the shack to talk to the boys. I'll have to tell them how things stand. Very well. And so long, mister. And thank you. Adios. Get up there. Luke Coleman was deep in thought as he approached the hideout. He didn't notice the two extra horses at the side of the weather-beaten old cabin. He dismounted and went inside. Hi, Luke. Hi. Where's Toby? I want to talk to all of you about that bank job. He, uh, he's in the next room, Luke. What about the bank? Are you ready to pull the hold up, Luke? No, I've changed my mind. Change your mind? What do you mean? I'll tell you all about it. Toby! Hey, Toby! He can't answer you, Luke. Can't answer? What are you talking about? 
We had to tie and gag him. What for? Luke strode quickly to the doorway of the next room. As he turned the knob and opened the door, he saw Deputy Marshal Hollis lying on the floor unconscious and tied hand and foot. What did... He's a lawman, Luke. We knocked him out. Which one of you slugged him? I did, Luke. Hit what? At that moment, Bluff Logan stepped from behind the partially closed door to face Luke Coleman. You knocked him out. Who are you? Luke. Meet Bluff Logan. What? I met him in a cafe when I was in town to buy supplies and Logan, I decided... Logan, uh, I've waited a long time to meet you, you muttering scum. Look out, Bluff. He's going for his gun. No, he's not. Uh, good thing you wrapped his head with a gun barrel, Bluff. That'll take the fight out of him. By the time he comes to, we'll be on our way to the Buckeye Bank. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger drew rein in his camp where Toto was waiting for him. Toto, where's Deputy Marshal Hollis? Well, him get plenty man. Say him arrest Coleman gang alone. Him go to hideout. He hasn't a chance of taking that gang single-handed. Me try tell him that, but him not listen. Well, we better go to the hideout. Uh, me ready, Kimasabi. Monsoon! Get up, stop! <laughs> At the hideout, the masked man and Toto found the deputy marshal, Luke Coleman and Toby. Coleman was still unconscious. Toto took the gag from Toby's mouth, while the Lone Ranger cut the marshal's ropes. Uh, thanks, mister. Who captured you, Hollis? Bluff Logan hit him with a gun barrel as soon as he walked into the cabin. This lawman should have known better than to come here like he did. I know that now. If you'll tie Coleman, I'll get my guns from the table where Logan left them. Then we'd all better head for town. Those polecats are on the way to rob the bank. Soon after the Lone Ranger, Marshal Hollis, and Tonto left for town, Toby squirmed across the floor to a chest where he found a sharp kitchen knife. By persistent manipulation, he managed to cut his own ropes. By the time Luke regained consciousness, Toby was already cutting the ropes the masked man placed around Coleman's wrists and ankles. As briefly as possible, Toby told what had happened. Toby, we've got to get to town ahead of Logan and the boys. I know a couple of shortcuts. If I travel fast, I'll be able to hit them all. Here, boss. You're free. Let's forget Logan and the boys and hightail it before that marshal's come back to take us to jail. Toby, my son Bob is sheriff in Buckeye. Oh. Now, if you want to clear out... Luke, we've traveled a long way together. I'll stick with you to the end of the trail. Thanks for that, Toby. Strap on your guns and let's get going. <laughs> When they reached town, neither Luke nor Toby knew that the outlaws would be trapped as soon as they drew guns in the bank. As they dismounted and walked toward the bank, Luke noticed that the street in front of the building was deserted. It's a good thing the street's clear. I sure travel fast, Luke. I told you those shortcuts would save time, Toby. But... Hey, Luke. Logan and the boys are stopping at the hitch rail in front of the bank. They're dismounting. I guess they see him. Get your guns out and take cover behind this building, Toby. Right. Luke! Reach for your guns, you rebels! You're first, Logan! Logan and the men with him grabbed their weapons and opened fire. As Luke triggered his own guns, he felt stabbing pains in his chest and shoulders. He staggered back under the impact. But by that time, Kino was the only outlaw who had not been wounded. Kino was about to remount his horse and head out of town when the Lone Ranger, Marshal Hollis, and Tonto appeared. There you are! Oh, 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 oh. Put your hands up, Kino. You're under arrest. Me keep him covered. As the Lone Ranger dismounted, he a big fella. Bob Coleman rushed from the bank with several deputies at his heels. Bob saw the masked man and called. Mister, did you start that shooting? No, Bob. Luke and Toby started it. But I don't savvy how they got free. How'd they get to town ahead of us? They must have taken several shortcuts. You boys take care of the armorers who are wounded. Right, we'll deal with them, Sheriff. Bob, this is Deputy Marshal Hollis. Hollis, this is Sheriff Bob Coleman. Oh, howdy, Marshal. Howdy, Bob. Coleman, eh? You related to Luke Coleman? Well, he's my father. Yeah. Your father? Well, come on, Bob. We'll see how badly he's hurt. Well, how badly who's hurt? Who are you talking about? Your dad is across the street. At dusk, Luke regained consciousness in Bob's lantern-lit office. Bob and Deputy Marshal Hollis were with him. How are you, Dad? <laughs> you had a close call, but the doctor says you'll be all right. Bob, it's you. 
Oh, son. Oh, of... now take it easy, Dan. I was afraid Logan and those other crooks might let you have it. Logan and Baldy are wounded. But they'll live to go on trial. I, I wanted to kill Logan. The law will deal with him. But he's the one who shot your mother. I he... know, I know. And he'll pay for it. Son, I, I reckon you know I'll be going to jail, too. Yes, I know, Dan. Toby told me how you two came here to try to stop Logan before he could rob the bank. Good old Toby. Uh, how is he? Why, he was hit by a bullet, but Doc says he'll be as good as new in a week or so. Of course, he'll go to jail with you, but the law might be lenient in his case and yours. Lenient with me? Why should it be, son? The law doesn't owe me anything now. I'm glad you realize that, Coleman. What? No, oh, this is Marshal Harvest, Dad. A friend of yours is on his way to the governor to discuss your case. The law owes him plenty. And with him on your side, who knows what your sentence will be. What, what man are you talking about? He's talking about your friend and mine, Dad. The Lone Ranger. is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.